face coverings must be worn on London's transport network despite restrictions easing on the 19th of July. This is according to London's mayor. We know that Andy Burnham in Manchester is looking for similar clout in this area. Sadiq Khan said he was not prepared to put tube, bus and transport users at risk by relaxing the rules on face covering. The decision has been backed by the Transport Secretary, Grant Shapps, interestingly. Face masks, of course, have been mandatory over the past year to reduce the spread of the virus. Both those rules will be replaced with government guidance advising passengers to wear masks only on busy services. Will they keep us safe? Let's speak with Keith Prince, Deputy Chairman of the London Assembly Transport Committee and Conservative Assembly member, and Chris Green, Conservative MP for Bolton, West and Atherton, and a member of the COVID Recovery Group. Keith Prince, afternoon to you. Firstly, do you back Sadiq Khan? Um, I do. I have to just make clear that I'm doing this in my personal capacity. I'm not yeah, representing okay. the committee because we haven't had a chance to discuss it That's yet. fair enough. But um, no, I do support Sadiq Khan on this particular issue, yeah. I mean, in terms of the autonomy that the government have, have given to local authority, I mean, was that the right move? So the government have said, OK, we will allow you to not wear masks unless that rule is usurped by the local council authority or whoever. I think the government are wise to not make a blanket rule across the whole of the country because different authorities have different needs and, and different situations. But most certainly in a situation where you can be very close to somebody mm. on, say, the tube, or on a bus, uh, then I think it's ultimately sensible but to is, actually wear a face is mask. Is this because the face mask is a visual item, do you think, Keith? I mean, you know, when you're on a no. tube or a train, you're touching handrails, you're touching doors, you're touching buttons, you're touching escalator railings. All of that is absolutely fine. But the face mask is the only thing that stays. No. Um, well, first of all, all those items are cleaned regularly every day by uh, TFL. Yeah, there's but there's tens of thousands of the, people on them. Come on, Keith, you know that. The point in relation to face masks is that face masks are not there to protect you. They're there to protect other people. The, the medical and scientific evidence clearly shows that spittle is uh, a very common way of transferring the disease. And that if you were to not that we do on purpose, but if, you, if spittle from your mouth was to pass into somebody's mouth or their eyes, then that will make the that they, they will then contract the virus. So it's very clear that we wear face masks, not for our own protection, because it's proven that it doesn't mm. actually afford you any protection, uh, but it's for the protection of others. And that's why I wear a face mask in those situations. Okay. Uh, Chris Green, who's a fellow Conservative, Tory MP for Bolton West and Atherton. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm assuming, given you're part of the COVID recovery group, Chris Green, that you're not on board completely with what Keith is saying here and Sadiq Khan's decision. Well, I, I, I don't uh, speak for the COVID recovery group, uh, but uh, no, um, it, it, we're going through an, a very interesting, uh, peculiar period of uh, uh, the COVID pandemic response. And what does terminus day mean? Uh, we've been told it's a terminus day, it's the end, we have our freedom, it's a freedom day. And then before very long, we're told that many of the freedoms we thought we were gaining, or the return to normality that we thought we were uh, gaining, have been taken away or undermined it makes it very difficult to understand exactly what's going on but i think in terms of the masks we need to be very clear uh, from the beginning uh at the beginning professor witty professor van tam was saying don't wear a mask they were basically saying don't even bother buying a mask and i haven't yet seen a clear decisive report from them saying initially we were 100 percent wrong and now do the opposite of what we were saying before and i think when we go through the pandemic, we have to base what we're doing on science, because as you pointed out, if it's not based on science, it's based on gesture. Yeah, that's the thing, Keith, isn't it? I mean, is there not part of you that thinks there is a bit of gesture politics in all of this? The mask is very visual. It carves out uh, a, a statement of intent, if nothing else. But scientifically, as one of our Steve in Batters Law just contacted us, said as soon as somebody touches their mask, moves it on their face or just removes it, puts on any germs transferred to their hands. So then you've got to open doors, don't pay with cash, handrails, the whole thing that I mentioned a second ago. I mean, the science is a bit iffy, Keith, right? Well, as, as I said, 
the wearing of face mask is to protect others, not yourself. Uh, it's up to you what. But are you protecting you... others if you take the mask off or you put your hand on your lip and then touch a rail? I mean, that's as good as anything else. These are absolutely microscopic areas of um, the virus that you couldn't see. They're so tiny. The thousands on a pinhead and the like. I mean, a bit of cloth, and not even good cloth sometimes, is not going to stop that. Well, yeah, what's the know. medical grade of this uh, cloth? Uh, is there a medical standard that we have to wear? Because ultimately, you could wear a pair of underpants on your head, and that counts. Is this really what we're demanding people do? Shouldn't it be, if we're going to have a mask mandate, there's be a medical grade of mask that we don't have at the moment, and Sadiq Khan's not committed to? Keith? Well, if I can speak without being rudely interrupted, um, it's about protecting others. And as I explained, it's about stopping spittle coming out of your mouth and going into vulnerable parts of the other person's body. And there's clear medical evidence on that, clear scientific evidence that spittle is one of the worst ways of transferring the disease. Of course, yes, you can catch it from other uh, sources but that's up to you isn't it if you travel on the train as soon as you get off the train you should sanitize your hands it's up to you whether you do that or not but this is not about well, protecting yourself this is about protecting other people chris you want what's to the what, what, what's the medical grade of face mask whether it's for you transmitting or you receiving what's the medical grade of this mask and weren't people saying a short while ago that children should still be wearing masks in school now, that we shouldn't really have a return to school now. What's the defining qualities of our release from these lockdowns? Because we know at the moment this has been lined up. So we go back into a form of lockdown uh, this autumn, this winter. We know what's happening. And would we have gone down this route at the beginning if we knew it's 16 months and counting? Well, I, I don't know what's happening in Bolton, uh, but what I do know is in London, we are seeing an increase of cases of the uh, Delta virus, I think they call it this week. Uh, and we have situations in London where people are in very close proximity to each other when they use public transport. And I think it's more than sensible that you should think of others. And you don't need a medical grade of mask. You just need something that is a barrier to stopping your spittle ending up on somebody else but what, if if transport committees and mayors were that serious keith and I, I can see many people texting in already asking this question then there would be other limitations in place wouldn't there you'd be saying well actually you can only have x amount of people on a bus or a tube you've got to retain social distance there's none of that in there it's just this whole thing about the mask and i think some people understandably and, and clearly chris too are, are maybe confused about that I don't understand why someone is confused. It, it's very Because there's loads and loads of very, other very ways to obvious. spread something if, other if than I'm just standing, wearing a mask. If I'm standing in your face and I cough or sneeze yeah. or breathe over you and put spittle in your mouth or in your nose or in your eyes, you catch the virus. Yeah, but how, how often do people do that. that anyway? I mean, that's not something that people tend to do. And if you could, if you just wiped well, you your... Well, you do. I mean, if you, you just wiped your on, face... Ian, do you not travel on London transport? Do you not travel on the tube, on the on the main lines? During yeah, I've never had anybody sneeze in my face, I have to say. Well, I certainly have. Well, that's a bit unpleasant. Well, of course it is. Well, one, one point what, I think we ought to be... And that's what the mask prevents. And one thing I, I, I think we ought to be thinking about as well. I, I know um, uh, London's not been very good in terms of uh, vaccination uptake and uh, perhaps Sadiq Khan might have a few words about that but professor chris witty and former secretary of state matt hancock were saying we're getting to the point where we can treat covid as we treat influenza if you look at the hospitalization and death ratio uh, compared to transmission that link is clearly fundamentally undermined and we are pretty much at that point if you look at the uh, uh, those ratios you look at the uh, death toll on a on a daily basis covid is a relatively small part of that so aren't we going to get to the point this autumn uh with this approach that we're taking where the uh the health authority is going to say because of influenza because you haven't built up your immunity because the normal transmission of bugs around society is not happening you as a population especially in london perhaps you're very vulnerable and therefore, you have to wear a mask, not for COVID, 
but for the flu. Yeah, I mean, and is that doesn't just that profoundly a, a, change a things? A final response, Keith, if you would. I mean, how long do you intend to wear your mask for? Because, I mean, this could go on for the foreseeable, forever. Yeah, no, it's just at the moment, as you've quite rightly identified, we don't have the high, higher levels of vaccination that other parts of the country do have in London. And I think it's a really sensible thing to do. And in fact, I think it's actually a Christian thing to do to put other people first and to think of other people and to protect other people by wearing a mask. Um, well, just, if, just on that. If that's, if that's, just, a, ba just if that's that a bad point. thing to do, well, fair dinkum, you know. Well, it, it all kicked off in London, didn't it? Surely the leadership, the political leadership, cross-party political leadership in London should have said, lock down London at the beginning, yeah. stop it and slow it spreading around the rest of the country. We didn't hear that Christian leadership at the beginning. So it's quite disappointing. Yeah, well, we look forward to more of Sadiq Khan's Christian leadership. Thank you, Keith Prince, Conservative Assembly member for Havering and Redbridge. He's a Conservative and fellow Conservative, Chris Green, Conservative MP for Bolton West and Atherton. You heard two distinct voices there. Um, I'd like to know where Sadiq Khan was come Wembley last Sunday in terms of looking after security and the presence outside. He doesn't control what goes on inside, but he is the Mayor of London for goodness sake. 